Hi guys and welcome to my review of uh, Microsoft Windows 10. Um, I've had about two weeks to play around with this and uh, get a feel for it. So I'm just going to go over what, what I've found, what I think is quite good, um, what I'm not so sure about and just, just give the people out there that haven't got this yet a uh, little taste of what it can do. So I'm running this on, this on a tablet um, connected to a dock. So it's a Dell Vinny 11 Pro with the uh, productivity dock. Um, so what I'll do is kind of talk about it from a uh, tablet kind of point of view and, and what it brings. Um, so first of all, when I uh, went on my tablet about two weeks ago, I had a little notification down here on Windows 8. I had the Windows symbol here. I clicked in, it said, do you want to enroll in the Microsoft Upgrade program to a Windows 10? So I accepted that. The next day, said so my software was available and then it starts to download it from the, um, from the Windows updates. So the download's about two gig. Um, it download, installed, all went smoothly and because it's an upgrade it retains all your applications um, all programs, backdrops, everything like that is, is fully retained so upgraded it, didn't have any problems and I found that all my applications, so Skype um, for example, my Epson printers, um, AVG um, all my Synology, because you use Synology NASes, all my Synology applications work um, so, so that's good. So, I haven't found any problems. I use Adobe as well for photo editing. Elements 13 again. That's not shown as certified on Windows 10, but again, I haven't any, had any problems with that. So, when you first install it and it comes to life, you, you're taken to this screen, and um, you obviously verify it with your Microsoft account. Um, I like to log in via a PIN, um, which is in the settings, which is easier easier to do. So, first of all, you have a search box here. I've just removed that. You have a task view, so what task view does is it shows you anything that you've got currently running, um, like a tablet would. But also what it gives you is this new desktop mode here. So what it creates is almost like virtual desktops, uh, instantly, just like that, so desktop 2. And then anything you run within that desktop basically loads up and is only seen and uh, it's transparent to the other desktop. So. Quite a nice little feature. Um, I'm not really quite sure where I'd use that then because obviously for users you define different users of people with different Microsoft accounts and they sign in through their accounts and obviously it's then customised to uh, to how they want to see it. So not quite sure of the the benefits of this yet, or, you know, the real implications. Um, so, uh, but you can just shut them shut them down as easily as you created them. So when you first go into well, that's the first change you'll see is this little thing here and you'll also see a search box. Um, if you click on the Windows tab now, this has changed as well. So this is like a hybrid Windows 7 XP meets Windows 8 variant, <laughs> to say it, to put it loosely. So you have your tiles there, but I don't really like that because I'm running a tablet. I, I quite like the tile screen. You know, people that might be booing with me saying that, but everyone's different. So what you can do is uh, go to settings. One of the big changes I want to point out is with Windows 8 it very much felt like there was this new front, this nice shiny new front end and then when you clicked into things it brought up your traditional uh, things we'd seen for years from XP days. So for example if you went to settings it would take you into control panel so it was almost like a front on top, it didn't have this new great feel to it so this is how uh, everything's kind of laid out now. So you click into your system, you know, everything's this kind of a uh, this kind of um, looks like this now, which is a lot nicer. So, what I like to do is I mentioned that I like to have the tiles. When I start, I like it to load up to the tile screen. So, if you go to personalization and start, you can actually use start full screen. So, if you notice there's no apply, cancel, or OK anymore, you slide your bars, when you slim it across, it applies it. Okay. So, now what happens is when I click on that, I get what I prefer my tile screen back. Okay, so I've got Twitter, I've got all my apps and things like that. To add new apps, instead of pressing down, it's on the side here now. Add in what you want. And then you've got your power button. So you've got your power, your restart, your shutdown, your sleep, that kind of thing. Let's go back in there. Something else I quite like, if you go to settings, is you've got the ability to define the size of your um, text and also your app, so your little apps that you click on, so like these things. 
So on this monitor, I've got the ability to set up to 225%. So it's got a recommendation of how big the icons, I should call them, and text should be, but it's down to personal preference. So I like that. Without affecting the actual resolution, the outputting, you're actually able to adjust the size of your of your text and your bits and pieces. Okay, again, you just slide it and applies it. So everything's kind of this kind of layout now, this kind of methodology through it. So one thing that's still there but it has been tweaked, give me one second, is on from the side till now here what you do is if you're linked up to social media you'll get notifications pinging in live here, so say someone's contacted or tried to friend you on, a, on social media it'll come up here so you can just clear that off. So in here you've got a tablet mode, you've got your settings, Bluetooth, your typical stuff, so you've got location services and you've got a battery saver on this. You know, you've got all your different options before you can obviously change your brightness here. Tablet mode, I'm undecided um, when you would use that. Maybe if you had a, a, a lower powered tablet um, or if you wanted someone just to have tablet features, maybe if they didn't really understand how to use full blown windows, I'm not quite sure what yet. But if you click tablet mode, basically when it starts, it will start to and load to this screen. Okay, but pressing windows, doesn't do anything. You've got your buttons, you've got your search, your task, you can create still new new task viewers, sorry, new task viewers, you can see your tasks. But you can't really do anything and there's no back to desktop mode. So I haven't really figured out the full benefits of that because I use this as a desktop and a tablet. I'm going to uh, flick it back to uh, take tablet mode off. So again, there might be a, a reason to use that, but I'm not, not a big fan of, it, fan of that. So then we go back to desktop. So one thing I do really like about this, and it was a big, big improvement on Windows 10, is um, basically my tablet, it's 1080p is really what the, what the screen will display is 1080, it won't go beyond that. Whereas this monitor, it's the Quad HD Dell um, 2515, U2515 monitor, which I'll put 2560 by 1440. So when I had Windows 8, um, so this monitor I could only display 1920 by 1080, not a really bad resolution, but when you've got a 25 inch ultra sharp monitor that's got 2560 by 1440, you want to drive, you know, you want to drive the best picture quality, you want it to be crisp and sharp, um, you want to get the most out of it. So with the development of Windows 10, um, it allows me to display on a monitor a higher resolution than the physical tablet screen can display. And I rely on that. And that's running at 60 hertz as well. So I think that's a massive improvement for people running um, larger, um, you know, higher resolution monitors to the to the devices they're uh, they're using. Um, I don't think what what else to uh, to to mention as well about the, uh, the technology. Oh yeah, um, it comes with um, this new uh, version of uh, what I'd say new version of Internet Explorer called um, Edge. A good thing about Edge is you can load up web pages and you can actually kind of doodle and, and, and draw and edit on them. Not everything supports Edge, so what it'll do is it'll uh, suggest another type of browser if you're trying to go to a site that doesn't doesn't work with uh, with Edge. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, oh yeah, something else that's quite interesting if you're running a tablet is when you load up an internet page. Because um, I'm using a keyboard at the minute, it won't display it right, but if I go, say say I was on tablet mode and when you first click on there it pops up with your, your keyboard so you can write next, it doesn't detect a an attached keyboard, it loads a virtual one. And what it does actually load up to is this keyboard. Okay, so what that keyboard allows you to do, and again I, I quite like this feature and I'll show you, is it allows you to actually write with a stylus what you want it to search for. So Excuse my uh, writing. Okay, so I've caught anything. I've done an I and a D. So, but you get the kind of idea, and then you can just erase individual letters. So, um, let's try and do it properly this time. There we go. So, you get the idea, and then you can just hit search. So, I quite like that feature. Um, makes you make best use of the stylus. 
Um, outside of that, um, that's it really. That's all I've kind of really, uh, really seen that's, that's different. Oh, no, I apologise. The layout of storage, right? And talking about Windows a bit more. So if I go to settings and you go to system, so if you go down to storage down here, you can now define where videos, pictures, um, music is stored. As you can see, I've got a the C drive, the, the main drive in the unit, and I've also got a D drive. So what you can also do is you can drill into your the C drive and you can actually see how much of your storage is utilised and where that utilisation is. So when you first install Windows 10, you'll find that you'll have 4.8 gig of temporary files. And those temporary files are Windows 8. So it does keep it, so if you wanted to roll back, you needed to say you had issues, you can do. If not, be warned, that will be emptied after a month automatically, so you won't have the ability to roll back. Because I uh, was confident in Windows 10, I actually just went in there and actually deleted it. So here you can just empty out everything, so your recycle bin, obviously the temporary files, that was obviously a lot bigger before. So I quite like the way it gives you this view of where your storage is, you know, what what's utilising it and the uh, the split of, of utilisation. Um, not sure if I mentioned this, but uh, obviously Windows 10 is only 2 gig and Windows 8 was 3.8, so the footprint's been almost halved. And I really like Windows 10. I think it's uh, improved on Windows 8. It's obviously a smaller footprint, so I retain more capacity. And things, like I said, they seem to take less clicks to get to where you want to be. Like I so said, Windows 8 very much felt like a front for Windows 7, like a nice glossy front, whereas this actually feels like a fully developed operating system designed for the modern tablet-type technology or two-in-one touchscreen laptop. Um, obviously, it brings more benefits to people who have that kind of techn tablet technology over, over someone just running it on a, on a PC. Um, and I think that's pretty much from just looking around. I mean, everything else is very similar from the point of view of, you know, you're setting your desktop background. Um, it's tied to your Microsoft account, so it pulls down your Microsoft account details uh, when you assign your device to it. Um, so all in all, I'd say Windows 10 was a, a worthwhile upgrade. If, uh, if your application support it and all your drivers support it um, and you've got the opportunity to upgrade to Windows 10, um, do it. Just bear in mind, you know, make sure and test that everything thoroughly works because you've got a month to kind of make that rollback if needs be. After that, then it's, it's a little bit too late. Um, yeah, uh, and, and another thing I just want to say with the tablet is occasionally when I used to uh, undock this, so the tablet sits within a, a um, productivity dock and it runs wired. And so it runs on uh, my wired network. When I used to bring the tablet off that, it then jumps over to wireless automatically. Occasionally on Windows 8, it wouldn't fail over from wired to wireless. I had to manually then connect it to the network. I have to say, within, with two weeks of using this, every single time I've disconnected it, um, there hasn't been that issue. It's picked up my wireless and it's connected straight away. So that was problems with Windows 8. So there are some little bugs that, that have been uh, have been worked out. Um, you know, I wasn't too sure where that issue was coming from, but the fact that you know I've upgraded to Windows 10 and it's not happened since. Um, something else that I use, which is which is pretty cool, is the uh, Microsoft Wireless Adapter. So that's plugged into a 55-inch 4K TV, and then I can use that as a as a 4K monitor. And again, it'll upscale um, the picture quality from my tablet. So I'm going to do a review on that on the on the Intel adapter as well. Um, but that's it really from, from my experience with it. Um, I think they've, Microsoft have, have done well, they've improved on it. It's brilliant that it's a free upgrade. Um, it's even more targeted towards people with tablets. It's faster, it's a smaller footprint, and like I said, everything seems to take less clicks to, uh, to get to where you want to be. Um, and there we go, that's, that's my review. If you've got any questions or if you want to leave any feedback, um, please feel free to uh, contact me. Thank you, bye.